In this video, I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how a transistor works. I have here a project I'm working on on another series of videos on making a linear power supply. This one is nearly finished and is a precision regulated power supply. Right now it's set up to work at 12 volts. It can only give about oh, maybe 500 milliamps or half of an amp of current. Uh, but the finished product will be able to deliver hopefully about 3 amps. What I'm going to do is use this in lieu of a battery to demonstrate how a transistor works. So just a quick uh, demonstration of how this is set up. This breadboard is set up so we have connections in this direction. So these five holes are connected, these five holes are connected, there's no connection across this gutter. And all these connections go this way, but not this way. So these five are connected to each other, but they're not connected to these five. Across the bottom here, we have connections going this direction. So all of these on the bottom row are connected, but they're not connected to the next row up. We use these breadboards to make prototype circuits and make them work, and then uh, transfer them over to a more permanent setup later. I have set this line as my zero volts or as my ground and this is my positive 12 volts. And so this is like a battery where this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal and I will use this to get the power to operate my little demonstration here. So what I want to do to begin with is just so how I can use this 12 volts to light up a light emitting diode. So here is a light emitting diode. I'm putting it with the cathode in the ground or the negative side and the anode up in these five wires here that I will be connecting uh, other connections to. So just to make it work, let's put a 1000 ohm resistor from the positive 12 volts to the anode of this light emitting diode and show that it will light up. So here is my regulated 12 volts in that hole there and I'll just transfer that over to here. These five holes are connected together and you can see the light emitting diode lighting up when I hook up that uh, 1000 ohm resistor. I don't want to put a wire directly between the 12 volts and the, and the uh, LED. This power supply can give enough current to quickly burn out this LED. So I don't want to let the smoke out of there. So this one kilo ohm resistor or 1000 ohm resistor is supplying, supplying enough resistance to the current flow so that not enough current can flow through the diode to damage it. So there's our lit up diode. Now what I'm going to do is attempt to light up this diode with instead of using this resistor as a conductor I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to connect from the positive 12 to the diode and let's see if I can light that up. So let's pull out the resistor there's no longer a connection there. I'm going to just put this other component here just as a convenient place to touch my finger to. That's not doing anything other than giving me a wire to touch here. So I'm going to touch this with one finger, touch this with the other finger, and bupkis. It does not light up. Why not? Well, I just have too much resistance. This is like, um, you know, if I, put a, if I put a straight wire here, it's like putting a fire hose down to this LED and it's just going to get too much and it's going to burn out. Putting the 1K resistor here again, that is like putting a garden hose there. It can't carry as much current, so it's not able to carry enough to damage the LED. But now if I put my finger here, this is like putting a very thin piece of tubing that can't just, it can carry some electricity. There's some electricity flowing there, uh, probably in the billionths of an amp but it's just I the amount of resistance in my body is just too much and like I said it's like a very constricted tiny little hose that just can't carry the current to do the job so what can I do if I need to have that tiny little current for some reason light up that LED well what I'm going to put here is a transistor now this is a 2N2222 NPN silicon transistor. There are three leads on this transistor. This one is called the collector. 
This one is called the base, and this one is called the emitter. And I'm going to connect the collector to my positive 12 volts. And at the same time, I'm going to connect my emitter to the anode of my light emitting diode. Now there's no real connection there because I have to put a jumper to get my 12 volts to the collector of the transistor. But there it is. So now we have my 12 volts going through this jumper to the collector of the transistor. The emitter goes to the cathode of to the anode of the LED and then the cathode of the LED goes to ground. So I have a current path going through there, but you don't see the LED lighting up. Because just like me, this transistor just has too much resistance. In fact, it probably has more resistance than I do. And so there's just no current flowing through there. Think of this like a open switch. In fact, that's what a transistor is. And this other lead, the base that I have just laying out in the open here, is the controller for the switch. And I can use a tiny amount of electricity to turn this switch on. So what I'm going to do is use the tiny bit of electricity that I can get to flow through my fingers to the base of this transistor and that will trigger the transistor to turn on and start conducting. So I'm touching this wire again and I'm touching the base of the transistor. Ready, set, go. Well, I don't even know if you can see that on the video, it's just barely lighting up. It is working. But I don't, don't know if you can see that or not. Well, that's because this is current sensitive. The transistor acts like a switch, but in a way that the more electric current I put into the base, the more current will flow from the collector to the emitter. And I'm just not putting enough in there. But what I can do is I can lick my fingers, and that will increase the amount of current going into the base, and that will turn on the transistor even more, basically making it from a very tiny tube to a garden hose. And so it's like making the hose bigger as I touch, uh, as, I, as I get more current going from the, from the source into the base. So I'm going to lick my fingers. And here we go. I'm touching the 12 volts and touch the base and it lights right up. So by getting a little more current, by getting decreasing my resistance of my fingers, I got more current flowing through me. Even though it was not enough current to light up the LED, it was enough current to turn on the transistor, and like a switch, it caused more current to flow through and light up the LED. So let's look at that again. I have my wet fingers, touching the 12 volts, touching the base of the transistor, and every time I touch that base, the transistor turns on and lights up that LED. Then if I dry my fingers off, touch it again, you can, say, you can see it lighting up, but it's not lighting up nearly as bright. Let's dry them up even more. And it should be even dimmer. And you can see that as I touch it, I just barely touch it. It lights up a little bit. As I press it a little more, it lights up more. But if I want it to really light up, lick my fingers and get a little more current going through there. I probably have something like maybe a few thousandths of an amp going into the base of the transistor and then a few tenths of an amp, maybe about a tenth of an amp, going through the transistor and lighting up the LED. So that is what a transistor does. Uh, it is a basically a electrically controlled switch. So here I am able to light up an LED, but let's light up something a little more powerful. I have here that I'm going to remove my LED, and I'm going to put in a little 12 volt light bulb. I'll hook that up to the emitter of the transistor, hook this up to ground over here, and well first of all let's put the light bulb on the 12 volts just to show that it works. Voila! There we have our light bulb lighting up. Get my fingers out of the way there. But if I put that on the emitter of the transistor, of course not enough current is going through to light up that light bulb. So here we go, I'm going to wet my fingers and touch the base of the transistor and let's see what happens. Nothing. So why was it able to light up the LED but not the light bulb? Well, like I said, the transistor acts like a very tiny piece of tubing until I run some current into the base, then it becomes something like a garden hose. But this needs a fire hose. 
so I need even more current to be able to go through. So what can I do here? Well, the problem I'm having with this is not so much that the transistor can't handle the current, not that it cannot open enough to let enough current through, but I cannot get enough current into the base to get it to open up enough. A transistor has a property called HFE, which is the ratio of how much current goes into the base of, to how much current goes in the collector. Let's say this transistor has an HFE of 10. If I put 1 milliamp into the base, I get 10 milliamps into the collector. Well, if all I can get is 1 milliamp, the maximum I can get is 10 milliamps. What if I need 100 milliamps? This takes, uh, actually I don't know how much this takes, but let's just assume it takes 100 milliamps to light up this light. And if I put in 1 milliamp in the base, I get 10 milliamps into the collector and therefore into the light. That's not enough to light it up. I need to get a force multiplier. And what I'm going to do is just use another 2N2222 transistor. So what I'm going to do is hook this up into the breadboard such that the emitter of this transistor goes to the base of this one. So let me hook this in. Put this over here. And I need a jumper to run from the emitter of this transistor over to this row to the base of that one. So let's hook that up. I think this is probably the right well, it's a little long, but I can skew it over and make it work. There we go. So if you look carefully, I have the emitter of this transistor going down to here, which goes to the base of this transistor. I also have to hook up both collectors to my 12 volts. So here's another jumper to do that. So I have the 12 volts going to the collector of both transistors. The emitter of this transistor going to the base of that one. So I'm cascading these two transistors together and I'll hook my light bulb to the emitter of the second transistor. So what I've formed here is what's called a Darlington pair. And it's a force multiplier because let's say this has an HFE of 10. So if I put 1 milliamp into the base, I get 10 milliamps out of the emitter. That 10 milliamps is going into the base of the second one. If it also has an HFE of 10, that means that the 10 milliamps going into this one will give me 100 milliamps coming into the collector and thus to the light bulb. So theoretically, I should be able to touch the base of the first transistor and now light up that light bulb. Here we go, licking the fingers, touching the 12 volts, touching the base, and voila, the light bulb lights up. So I was able to use that force multiplier. Uh, the advantages of a Darlington pair are, as I said, it's a force multiplier. I multiply the two HFEs together. So if I have an HFE of 10 here and an HFE of 10 here, that gives me a total HFE of 100. So I put 1 milliamp into the base of the first transistor, I get 100 milliamps into the collector. The other thing is that if you recall about uh, impedance, low currents are associated with high impedance and high currents are associated with low impedance. So a Bipolar junction transistor typically takes a fair amount of current to operate, and so therefore they have a low input impedance. So it will have the problems of a low input impedance circuit. As you will see in the studies, if you connect a circuit with a high output impedance to a circuit with a low input impedance, the demand of the second circuit will pull the voltage down of the first because the high impedance output cannot supply the current. But by using a Darlington pair, since it takes less current to operate, that makes it a high impedance input. So if I would need to drive a high impedance output to a low impedance input, which basically doesn't work very well, if I modify that input to a Darlington pair, that turns it into a high impedance input. That usually works very well, and I'm able to couple the two circuits without pulling the voltage down. The disadvantage is, of course, I'm going through two diode drops here. Between the base of the first transistor and the emitter of the second, I am going through two forward bias diodes. So instead of losing approximately 7 tenths of a volt, I'm losing approximately 1.4 volts. And that's something I have to compensate for. And as a matter of fact, if I'm dealing with power transistors, that can even be a lot more. Uh, this particular transistor can have a base to emitter voltage of as much as 1.8 volts. And so I add 
uh, that together, I, I get the corresponding the higher voltage drop from the base to the emitter. There are other types of transistors. The main other type of transistor is the field effect transistor. And the main difference is that where the bipolar junction transistor is controlled by the amount of current going into the control lead, a field effect transistor is controlled by how much voltage you put on the control lead. They have different names. The bipolar junction transistor has the collector, the base, and the emitter. And the field effect transistor has the drain, the gate, and the source, uh, which have corresponding uh, purposes. So I control the bipolar junction transistor by how much current I put into the base, and I control a field effect transistor by how much voltage I put on the gate. And of course there's opposite polarity transistors where this one is working by conventional current going into the base. If I have a PNP transistor, it works by conventional current coming out of the base. So everything reverses direction if I have a PNP transistor. But if you want to know more about that, uh, go to the lesson on transistors and study the difference between PNP and NPN transistors. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.